Time travel was something I only dreamed about as a little kid, before Mephilus the Dark showed me it could be done. It seemed like the easiest solution to all our problems with Iblis, the flames of disaster destroying our world. If someone could go back in time before all this devastation happened, it could be prevented and our world could be as happy as things were in the old books and holodisc I grew up with. That was the future I wanted when I dedicated my life to my psychokinetic powers to fight Iblis. Maybe it was naive, but I should have known time travel wasn't the easy fix that Mephilus made it out to be. He was lying to me anyway to get me to kill Sonic the Hedgehog. Mephilus, I got three choice words for you. You're a jerk. But at the same time, I owe a lot to you, good and bad. Is it weird to be angry at someone but also appreciate the horrible things they made you do? The first time I actually met Sonic was when Mephilus sent me into the past to eliminate him. I've been looking for you. You're the Iblis Trigger. Your actions will condemn us all. Who are you? My name is Silver. For the future of this world, I will destroy you. Let's just say it was all, uh, kinda awkward. Sorry, Sonic. But actually, to tell you the truth, I ended up forgetting all about that. When Sonic, Shadow, and I finally destroyed Solaris from the compressed timelines, and Elise blew out the Eternal Flame, the timeline of our world shifted, so that it never happened. Or at least, we didn't remember, but some part of it stayed with us, like memories from a dream. Miss Elise? It felt like... like someone was calling me. I'm sure it was just the wind. Of course. But it felt so familiar... somehow. The future, my world, was bright and beautiful. The people were peaceful and high-spirited, but sometimes I felt like there was this weird deja vu about things. I go to certain places that felt comfortable and familiar to me, but it also felt like I used to be there with someone. In the back of my mind, I missed someone. Badly. But I didn't know why I felt like that. I never knew my real family. I hadn't lost anyone recently. I tried to ignore it even though it was burning me out pretty bad. And then one day, this creep with a giant mustache showed up and somehow managed to steal a special camera from an influential inventor in Crisis City. The camera was actually designed as a storage system. It could condense anything it took a picture of into a small card. Someday, it could even carry your own house in your pocket or massively downsize city dumps. It was pretty revolutionary technology, so the scientists begged me to go after that guy who... escaped into the past? Anyway, this weirdo's name was Dr. Eggman Nega, and he was using the camera to turn people into cards. I realized there was a guy in the past named Dr. Eggman, and I wanted to talk to him cause, wow, what a weirdly specific name. This had to be Eggman Nega in a wimpy disguise of himself, or they had to at least be cousins, right? Either way, Dr. Eggman had the camera I needed to recover, so no matter how he got it, or who he was, I still had to get it back. The situation was urgent, but people kept getting in my way, including this blue hedgehog named Sonic. Eggman! I know you know something about that Dr. Eggman nega guy! <laughs> if you really need to know, I'll tell you. But only if you defeat that blue hedgehog. Hey, get back here, Eggman! Get out of my way! 
I've got some personal business with him. Hey, you sure have an attitude. Who are you anyway? My name is Silver. I can't tell you why, but I need to get him before you. Okay, Silver. Bring it on. I like challenges. Actually, Sonic and a few others ended up helping me catch up with Dr. Eggman. And he was Dr. Eggman Nega. Just as I thought. See, SPO? I could be a detective. He even tried to turn the whole planet into a card. Which, in retrospect, I wondered why the scientists back home weren't more, you know, concerned that their technology was this powerful. What were they thinking? Eggman Nega either wanted to change the future or destroy it, but he lost control of his machine and turned himself into a card. Luckily, the process was reversible, so everyone and everything that had been transformed could be turned back. I was going to bring Dr. Eggman Nega back to the future with me to face justice for his theft, but he managed to escape and cause problems again. It was kind of obvious that something went horribly wrong because things were still fine and beautiful in the future. And then one morning, everything was on fire again. I really freaked out. It reminded me of something that had happened before. It was another weird moment where I felt like a memory from a dream, but in this case, a nightmare, and this time, I was all alone. But, what did I mean by that? Once again, it felt like someone was missing, but as much as that weighed on me, well, things were literally on fire. It was sort of a priority to figure out why. Good luck, Silver! It turned out some monster called the Ifrit had been unleashed at some point in the past, and had destroyed the world. I used the same machine as before to go back in time to stop this from happening. And lo and behold, Dr. Eggman Nega was up to no good again. He was the one that was going to revive the Ifrit, and he was collecting all those poor little Chow to literally feed him to the beast as its fuel. Ugh, I couldn't let that happen. So I started collecting them to hide them somewhere safe. That was when Espio the Chameleon turned up. He thought I was stealing them for a bad reason, but when I asked him to trust me, he did. Silver, what is this about saving our world? If you want to save the world, we have to hide the Chow in a safe place. You want me to believe that? Yes, why? Unbelievable as it may seem, for some reason, I trust you. Are you going to help then, or keep getting in my way? I'll help. Good! It was all kind of crazy, but we worked together to stop Dr. Eggman Nega before we could unleash the Ifrit. Why was this guy making so much trouble all of a sudden anyway? After it was all over, Sonic said that usually his friend Blaze had this guy all under control. Blaze? Eh, didn't ring a bell. The future stayed in pretty good condition after that, but sometimes things would get to feeling weird again, so I jumped back to the past to check on things. One of those times, Dr. Eggman had made a huge space amusement park with giant ice cream and cake mountains. What a weirdo! But it was pretty interesting anyway, and no big dilemma because Sonic and Tails already had it under control, and I knew by then what Sonic was capable of. I actually met one of his friends there, the girl he mentioned a while back, Blaze. We were having a fine and dandy conversation when Dr. Eggman's robot lackeys decided to try and jump us for some reason. They seriously underestimated what we could do. Ha! And fighting alongside Blaze felt so natural. So familiar. But it felt so familiar. Somehow. I really didn't know why, but I ended up hanging out with her the rest of the day until Sonic saved the world and everything and Blaze had to go home. I returned to the future and... I couldn't forget about her. And suddenly, whenever I went to those places in my timeline that felt familiar, where it seemed like someone was missing... Blaze! It was Blaze! I found out later that everyone's memories had slowly been returning of a timeline we erased to save the future. I remember meeting Sonic before, and Shadow, and Blaze. Ah, It was all at once the hugest relief in the world to remember, and also it felt like a punch in the gut. 
Blaze was my friend, who sealed herself into a different dimension to save my world and hers. I realized that when I jumped back in time to chase after Dr. Eggman Nega the first time, I had actually jumped back to BEFORE Blaze had come over to my future. And we had already passed the junction where the Soliana timeline had originally started, but we had erased it from existence. In this world. Blaze was in another world when that happened. And now, she was in neither. I tried not to think about it, but maybe we erased Blaze from both worlds due to an anomaly. Well, after the future was at risk again due to a hostile takeover of the Eggman Empire in the past, where I had to jump back and kick Sonic for being the Empire trigger, I decided to stick around for a while to look for somebody important. I swear I'll find you. You're my friend, right? I'm Silver. But the whole world needs to ask you a favor, Silver. Would you be willing to go on a quest? Well... What, what kind, kind of a quest? quest? I Iblis? Silvermite! Set out it! Get away from there! I've, I've got, got a score to settle with you! No, no! Forget about it! Please, come on! I'm looking for somebody important and... Uh, I can't move! Ah! Speed break! I have to believe that you're still out there somewhere, or else I don't think I could go on like this. It's getting too hard. Silver. Blaze? You're stronger than you think, but you need to start taking care of yourself. Good luck, Silver. Wait! Don't leave me here! Please, don't go! Just hang in there, okay? Wherever you are, I'm on my way. I promise. Blaze. But this is a moment from the past. It doesn't belong with the others. Does it? Silver! Marie! Take my hand! What was the last thing I hit my head on? I need you to trust me. I trust you. There's no choice but to finish what we started. Let's save the future together this time. After all that madness, Iblis was no longer an active threat, and I was reunited with my friends, Silver and Marine. And finally, after all that time, I was able to go home to my soul dimension. Here I have been ever since. It seems time and space between Sonic's world and my own has been loosened up since I've been away. It is now far easier to travel in between, and it does not depend solely on the Chaos or Soul Emeralds teleporting us in moments of crisis. In fact, I've been able to up and go to Sonic's birthday party twice. In which yet another situation arose where time and space was horrifically compressed and extremely confusing, and I think perhaps that was a sort of breaking point because these days we're all noticing little time anomalies here and there. There's sort of a problem. Time travel is weird enough to begin with because of all the time anomalies you could create. I saw that repeatedly myself in the way that the future could be nice and safe for a while and then suddenly fall apart with me standing there shouting about the sudden destruction. But everyone would look at me and say, But Silver, it's always been this way. I had to keep traveling back to the past because of that. No matter what I did, saving the future was only temporary. Even though I could still go home to my future sometimes, I have to come back to the past a lot now because history says I was here with Blaze and Sonic and the others saving the world. Whenever I jump back forward to the future, it means I wasn't there with them to play my role in our adventures against Dr. Eggman and the like. So it results to the future falling apart eventually. Silver himself seems to be an anomaly in time, unable to exist peacefully in his own time. Because the safety and well-being of the future hinges on his presence here in the past with me and with Sonic to fight off deviants that would create bad futures. It's like I'm falling out of time a little. 
but I'll do whatever it takes to protect the future from destruction, no matter how many times something here in the past will arise to threaten it. And I know I'll be alright, because I'm not alone anymore like I was. Who knows what the future holds, but we're here together now to make it a bright one. There's no fate but what we make for ourselves.